Hey guys, in today's episode, we're going to go over our top 10 awesome horror action figures. And because there's 10 figures, there will be no show and tell this week. And then, of course, we're going to open the box of mystery. And ask, um, what's his face here, some questions. Eight ball? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Gen X Vault. I am Chris Mitchell. Rob Kennedy. And today, we're going to be doing what we do best. We're going to be talking about our top 10 horror action figures. Now, if you've watched the show at all, that's kind of what we do. Yep. That's how we met and fell in love. We love the AFCs. AFCs? Action figure collectibles. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I didn't even know there was an abbreviation for them yet. Oh, I just took action figure collectibles. That's what you call them. You have said that before. AFCs. AFCs yes. Action figure collectibles. Because we said in the first episode, I think I said dolls, and you said no, AFC. AFC, TM. AFC, <laughs> TM, RC. Rob Kennedy, right there, yes. Circle C. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about our top 10 horror action figures today. And so, uh, Rob had mentioned, hey, since we're already doing the action figures, let's just leave off show and tell, and I, I agree, because yeah. it's kind of what we do anyway. Yep. So, I tell you what, I think I, I think, did I go first last week? I don't remember. Well, I tell you what, judging by your collection. No, um, you know, you went, I must have went first because you went last with the ring. Okay, that's right. And you are such an expert in movies that I wanted you to go first. Right. All right, well, on our uh, top pick this week, I'm going to go ahead and start with mine right out the gate. I'm going to come out swinging. Chris's first pick. And I took, it out, I took it out of the packaging today. Did this you really? Is, yeah, this was That's the Dracula new. one? Yeah, and I've got three of these. Really? I can't I can't turn them down if I see them on mine. I'm just fucking up. I'm not yeah, you have three of the Dracula I have three of these. Why? I have three of these. Why? Okay. I mean, that kind of constitutes a problem. Uh, it does kind of constitute a problem. Yeah. All right. So Rob and I are laughing because uh, for my first pick, while I was changing this over, we I have some dioramas today, so I'm going to be cutting back and forth. Um, he found out that I have three of these uh, McFarlane action figure play sets. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you what these are, Rob. I'm actually, this is kind of interesting. Now, wait a minute. Now, clear this up for me. Yes. You have three separate play sets or you have three Dracula play sets? I have three of this exact same Dracula play set. Okay. I do. I don't understand that, but okay. Okay. Well, I understand two. What, uh, like one to show, one to one, go? Yeah, one to show and one to play. Unless well, you're going to put them in different poses or no, something. No, I, it's not that with me. It's the, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can explain this to you. Okay. So, I got my first one. Yep. And uh, I loved it so much that, you know, we decorate plaid dot. Yeah. Uh, Plaid dot, of course, my shop. We decorate it, and you know, I'm big into the whole window display. We do. Mm -hmm. I do my my whole storefront display is basically all uh, Halloween diorama right now, both right. sides, both the windows, and I might throw some footage up there or something like that. But I love doing that, and so I took my my Dracula display down one year and put it right by the register. Right. So I just took it down, and you know, I think maybe with kids moving things around, or maybe it fell off a couple times, or people shuffling stuff, it maybe some of the pieces just you know went missing yeah. or whatever. And so, um, I have one in my office, right? And uh, and and I think I, I think I bought another one to re I bought one to keep downstairs. I kept that one downstairs mm -hmm. as a display piece. Okay. And then I kept one up in okay. my office with the collection. So you had different, yeah, different places. Okay, now it makes sense. Well, you didn't figure thought, out why I have the third one. Oh well, I was just going with. You were just going what with you it. said. <laughs> well, the Chris, third why one, do you have the third one? It's funny you should ask that yes. question, Rob. Uh, the third one came about because I was looking for it the other day here, and I went, mm -hmm. "I don't have that here." <laughs> and you know how that goes. eBay. .com. When you exactly, and I, and these are actually the cool thing about these is this is from the McFarland Monster Series Dracula playset in 1997. I had it. I had it in 97. So I think my McFarland goes back at least that far, maybe a little further, yeah. at least that far. And the cool thing about this figure, about this playset, is when McFarlane did these, um, he uh, he set them up in such a way, and I'll, I'll rotate this to you, and the camera can see these details. He set them up in such a way to where the whole thing frames the scene. Right. You, you he did such a good job of framing this. You know of everything that's going on. Yep. You know, the uh, the cemetery gates with the spiderwebs or fog yep. really paints the image that he's coming out of a grave in a cemetery. Of course, there's the coffin, yep. uh, the bat hanging on the door, and that, of course, it rotates around to show you the, uh, the that it's Dracula, and it says on there, yeah, of course, the yeah, it, it rotates around so the figure can be there. Right. And it says Vlad Dracula, the Impaler. Yep. So it's really cool. 
So that uh, that bat stays there. Now the other thing that it does, and this is this is kind of interesting. Um, not only does it come uh, with Dracula, it comes out of course, but uh, he has a ready-made stake through the heart. There you go. So you could add that to it. Uh, that's all right. Now there's a there's a thing on this uh, in true McFarland fashion. I took this brand new, out of the box today, brand new from 1997. So it's new old inventory, and exactly like mine did in 1997 the bottom half of his cape was already hanging off and broke <laughs> just like mine in 1997 just like mine at the shop yep. i mean exactly every piece of that it was barely kind of glued on but honestly the figure works just as good without it yep so i don't really worry about it um well the stake is important because part of there's um i think it's either i think it's house of dracula an old universal um horror movie follow-up to um the original dracula where the stake is very important if you uh, takes the stake out, the vampire comes back to life. Really? Yeah. Dracula so you have to did. leave the stake in the heart. Yeah, because Dracula, his body actually got passed Ooh. around to a um, traveling uh, sideshow. I didn't know that at all. And it was like, come see Dracula's body. And it's like just a skeleton with a stake stuck in there. And then somebody takes the stake out and through... Um, the skin and all that. Yeah, huh? through time-lapse photography, then Dracula regenerates Which one was that? The spot. Was that? Which movie I, was I that? believe it was House of Dracula. It was in the 70s? No, House of Dracula was in the... It, probably in the late 30s or early 40s. Oh, so it's really It was one of the... It was one of the, because, uh, as JT always points out, the Universal Monsters was the first, uh, you could call it the first cinematic universe. Okay. Because even though uh, they played loose and fast with continuity, it was it was still kind of based on uh, one movie was kind of related to the one before it. Okay. So even though, okay. even though they didn't really hold themselves to any kind of narrative, mm-hmm. there was like the Dracula that was in House of Dracula that got... Uh, the stake removed and came back to life. He was the Dracula from, from the 1931. Okay, interesting. Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi. But it wasn't okay. Bela Lugosi. Oh, but he was the same guy, though. Yeah. Same universe. Well, now, there's an interesting thing about this. So, like we talked about, I have three of these, um, yeah. un- kind of unintentionally. They're still actually a good price on eBay. So, yeah. that's actually, they're not they're not expensive, which is really nice. I mean, I think they're only about $10 more than their original price. Yeah. So, it's not that bad. Um, but, again, I love the framing. I love the whole setup. You know, uh, Dracula's got his cape with his arms attached and all that stuff. And so when he does his little, his yeah. bat move, you know, he, he does that. That's right. The other thing is, is that there's a little interesting feature here, which I want to talk to you about. This is kind of interesting. So you notice the cushion. Uh, I like that you can remove the coffin. Oh, yeah. And it's. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, the same way that I'm a sucker for helmets, I'm a sucker if it comes with a box, man. Yep. So the fact that he fits in the coffin really well. And you can close, you it, can up. close it up. Yep. That's I mean, good. you know, you got that whole thing there. You can have that any way you want. I like that. Now, here's an interesting interesting feature. This is what I didn't realize. Um, so, because of the fact that when I opened this up out of the package today, I went, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, it's got red pillow lining. Yeah. Well, look at this. The one that I got from 1997. Oh, variant. Yeah, it's a variant. It has yeah. just white pillow lining. Now, a lot of you guys that collect, you, you may... Uh, some of you guys may wonder, oh, man, they made variations. They made variations in different markets. A lot of times, that's not the case. A lot of times, they could run out of the paint. True. A lot of times, that you know, production says they misread a production card or something like that. Could be a second print run. I mean, could, a second run. Could be. And so they did a variation run. just yeah. to show where it was. And, and in some cases, it could be that different manufacturers made different things. In this case, it's probably not the case because you've got the mold cost and all that associated with it. But sometimes different factories will actually put a different thing involved, like a different yeah. stamp or a different uh, color variation so that you know where it came from. Yep. And that, that happens a lot with serial numbers. So in this one... And we know that McFarlane, he catered his toys uh, to mass market and direct market. Right. So that, that could be a difference there, possibly. The, the one was mass market, one was well, direct yeah. market. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a weird... It's kind of That would be a weird variation to have, but, yeah. but I could see it at the same time. Yeah, I don't know why you would, but yeah. just... Uh, no, there's probably I, I, I agree with you. It was either they just ran out of paint, that's right, or it was a um, a, a second one of them's a second uh, manufacturing run. That's right. I know. And you know the cool thing about this, like I was telling about this, is you know like with in McFarland fashion, these things are they're finicky. You got You're, you're mm-hmm. basically buying them as Rob says, a collectible. It's not. Uh, but ironically, it's only. Well, ironically, on the box, on the packaging, it says ages four and up. I'm like, who's giving this to a four year old? <laughs> yeah. What? Do you, hey, hey, Timmy, come in here. Yeah, here, Timmy, eat this. Yeah, you, you can good. shove a steak through his heart, yeah. Timmy. Isn't that great? Or you up can, your nose, Timmy. You can bury this guy, Timmy, in the yeah. backyard in this coffin. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, so I just kind of, I, this has been one of the, I think it's because it was one of the first ones I ever got. Yeah. That it was, it's always been near and dear to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> it was the worst laugh ever. I'm adding the biggest laugh track on that well, ever. The ever. laugh went with the joke. Now, <laughs> I actually had most of these, but mm-hmm. I did not have, I never had this one. This you is the first this time one? I've seen this one. Really? Out of the package, yep. I thought you, okay, I figured you'd had this one. No. Uh, yeah, well, like I said, this is the 1997, and I kind of thought, you know, as I've got him in there, I'm going to go ahead and, and drop this guy in here like he's making his way out. And, yeah. and he's got the, the bat waiting for him on the door. And he is good to go. So yeah. that is my first pick for the Halloween Horror Spectacular. I like it. Is the 1997 Todd McFarlane Monster Series Dracula. Dracula. Rob's first pick. My first pick was the Dracula. What is yours? Right, my first pick is staying in the McFarlane uh, toys line. And my first pick is, give me just a second here, I'm having some revolt. All right. Is Leatherface. All right. McFarlane's toys, Leatherface from um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, disclaimer right up front I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies are dumb. If you like them, more power to you. I'm not criticizing you. Um, but I just thought this was a really cool figure. I bought this at Gallops back oh, in the did day. You, did you? Yep. It, 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 I don't, I've got it put up somewhere. It actually comes with like a um, a stand and a movie poster. When you did the Movie Maniacs for Texas series. Chain, yeah, Movie Maniacs. That's yeah. what this is. And it came with a Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing. But that took up a lot of room. And um, I just ended up not I put it, I put it up somewhere. But uh, this is a cool figure. Uh, this is, I don't know if you remember last week and we're paying attention, we talked about McFarlane had yeah. bloody figures that went to direct markets and then uh, non bloody figures that went to Walmart and mass right. marketplaces like this. Right. Well, I got this from Gallup's Comics and Games way back in the day. So it's all bloodied up. And he won't stand up on his own. Uh, uh, pro tip if you do have this figure and you're having trouble making him stand, you can use this little bucket of body parts here to uh, prop him up and make him stand up proper. Now, do, uh, let me see that real quick. Does it, do the body parts on, come I'm, out of yeah, the Yeah, I want to show you the body parts because this is really, really uh, morbid. Demented. In here is a hammer uh, for stunning them, I guess, when they're not quite uh, being compliant to being cut up with a chainsaw. And then uh, I guess he used all the other parts and he kept this stump of an arm with the bones protruding Ugh. and and then he kept the head the poor guy with glasses and a goatee or a, a goatee or a van dyke that would be yeah i think it's a goatee yeah and then is, there, there's the bloody stump and just um uh super super uh graphic it is and, graphic uh, and what's but, in the is there anything stuck in the bucket no just, just blood. blood it's just uh, full of blood blood and there, you can actually nice little touch if you really look you can actually see that there's there's blood pooled Really? In the bottom of the bucket. Oh, yeah. Yep. Exactly. And if you want to display the head properly, put the arm in first, and you can kind of prop the head up so it's looking out. That would be a posing tip. Yep, posing tip. And so my first pick is uh, Leatherface from the Movie Maniacs yeah, uh, and series that McFarlane did and what, at some point. I don't what was when. neat to me about that? Well, I guess not really neat to me about that. This wasn't a, a thing that I, I... I would do the same thing you did. I wouldn't display the little background diorama. Yeah. I would do the um, the um, um, the because they 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 were kind of a tall poster. It basically had a little yeah. movie poster on it, and the poster was real cheap, real cheap. And it, and the background of it kind of looked like bones, almost like if Geiger made the background yeah. out yeah. of bones and things like that. You yeah. know, it was kind of. A, it, I mean, it was. I could see how the people that were into movie posters and stuff like that would dig it, but I just yeah. didn't dig it. Well, it, like I said, it the the poster was cheap. Um, paper and it was all it was all uh, wavy and right. buckled and it just didn't to me I'm finicky and it just didn't display good right you know, well so. yeah, the, I mean Farland stuff and like it took up a lot of room right yeah right yeah yeah it just this it takes the place of another figure yeah that's right it does. all right cool deal all right so for Rob's pick we got Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface Leather all right Chris's second pick. I have yet another diorama, and this time I have the McFarlane series. This is the 1998 uh, Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein set. 
Um, what's cool about this one is that he did a 1997 Frankenstein as well, and I have that one too, where the where he t- tilts mm-hmm. on the, I have on that the one gurney. Well. Mm-hmm. What's neat about this one is there's a lot of detail in the guts and the and the yeah. multi head and all that kind of stuff of this monster. Yeah, that's a cool figure. I've got that figure on. Display. It is. He added again a play feature. You've got. The electrodes come in there. Yep. Uh, this again is the monster series. It's in that same series that McFarlane has always done. Um, he comes, of course, with the some beakers and things like that. They're silver. Now this, don't know why he thought it was a good idea for it to come with a bong, but I guess uh, well, Doctor yeah. Frankenstein hitting break. up hitting up pretty good on that. I'm about to say, uh, uh, to make something like that, uh, drugs were probably involved. Now there's another play feature that I didn't even realize. I just, I just, I'm actually discovering about this. And this thing, it ratchets up. Like you can, you can raise this thing up. You yeah. know, in, in a way, I can't really. There's probably a better than average chance the place that'll fall apart. There is probably true. There we go. There we go. It it raises up, Rob. There you go. Look at that. Oh, and you yeah. can see the electrodes and whatnot under yep. it. I don't think that's supposed to be there. I think that's it's part of the. Oh, you know what? That goes. Like this. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I get the wrong called person. you over earlier. There you go. There you go. Now, there we go. Rob, Rob is teaching me all yeah. about my play sets. Now, be careful if you have these play sets or you're thinking about buying these play sets. You've heard us talk if you um, are a long-time listener. Uh, <laughs> long time. If you're seven episodes in. This is during the time when McFarlane used really hard, kind of cheap plastic. Mm-hmm. And I've had, I've had several of these sets, and I've had several of these sets basically fall apart. Right. So um, anytime you're doing something with one of these old uh, monster play sets from McFarland Toys, uh, be very careful with them. Yeah, no, th- Rob just corrected my uh, my bottom here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll edit that part. No, we're going to add more laugh tracks. Oh, boy. That. You love my laugh tracks. Yeah. Um, Rob just corrected the base of the play set for me. Yeah. And uh, I love this. i tell you now that I'm pl- looking at this more. I said playing with it. Yes, I am. I love the double bone in the leg. I just yeah. that's a cool touch. I love the ribs. I love the hidden guts and the electrodes going to yeah. it. Now that we've got that base in, it kind of raises up. I love it. Ah, <laughs> and nice. it raises off. up. Yeah. Um, Did, I wonder if there's a way to lock him in place. Uh, you there. know what? It's got little ratchets, yeah. so you would think I bet you that could it, push them in or something. And uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna try that. With yeah, McFarlane, we'll you know what I mean? The mess. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the Frank, you know, the daughter Frank signs up's okay. He's yeah. got the bone saw and the needle, you know, and all that. That's fine. Yep. It is what it is, but. Again, this is a really cool thing. He's got this little this gurney that like mm-hmm. or this little swivel table. You know, he's got he's got him on a little gurney and he's got this little swivel table. And I just I think it does a really good job. Again, why he chose to put it on stilts, I, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Rob. Does was this ever supposed to go with any other uh, set? I think it. I think it actually. I actually I don't think this is meant to be Frankenstein. This is the Mad Scientist playset. I think it's Doctor Frankenstein. I think that is that made that is Doctor Frankenstein, but mm-hmm. this is not the monster. Okay. I think it's meant to go with the other set that has Eeyore, Igor, Eeyore, <laughs> <laughs> the, the mule, the donkey from uh, Winnie. I the dug Pooh. up another dead guy. He's upset. <laughs> um, Igor and um, the actual Frankenstein monster. Okay. But I, I, I believe, uh, and Chris will verify, and he'll tell he'll tell you which I'll, one of us I'll is look right, it up. I'll which look one it is up. wrong. I believe this playset was labeled Mad Scientist. But I think maybe that is Dr. Frankenstein. But um, it, I think this was the Mad Scientist playset. And I believe it somehow uh, was supposed to be in conjunction with the actual Frankenstein playset, which came with the monster and Igor. Okay. But could be well, wrong. I it's mean, been a long time. And trust me, we really don't do that much research for these shows. Yeah, now, so, I, now the weird thing was, I, I did look up the, yeah. the name and the date on this one. Yeah. So I think it is the Frankenstein. Okay. But, but I, you know, he's done so many different variations of that. Yeah, because I think, I think well, I thought there was a mad scientist thing. Because it's clear that the other place said it's Frankenstein. It's right. supposed to be the monster. Because that doesn't resemble the monster at all. No, but, I mean, you've seen it. It's like a first draft you, or something. You've seen his Wizard of Oz play sets. No, I actually haven't. I've, I've got some of them. Not... Any close resemblance yeah. whatsoever. Well, it probably has some copyright stuff he had to. Well, avoid. well, if yeah, well, well, yeah, he he did. But at the same time, we're also talking about he made them 
as if they were nightmares. Yeah. In true Tim, like he made Santa Claus. Yeah. You know, just true, in, almost like uh, Tim Burton's uh, take. Well, on that, Universal you know? might have been like, "What are you doing over here?" That's right. Mm-hmm. That, that could be. Well, yeah. And he, and we have, yeah. he would have had copyright issues with the design of yeah. Frankenstein too. I would imagine. Yeah. But um, but anyway, so my my uh, take is this. I believe it's the Doctor Frankenstein playset from 1998, the McFarlane. And uh, again, I like the framing. I like the fact that it even put it on stilts. Yep. It has that uh, just that nice little touch to it. It sets it up a little bit. Um, he did a good job of framing all of it. Yep. Uh, you can see where the test tube is right here on the side and the test oh, tube yeah, holder. And I guess I could have put you know one of his other urns or something like that yep. up there. But I chose just to display them, kind of like the, he's been working. He knocked them on the yep. ground. And I, I had this. I had this play set, but it it did not survive the move from between houses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think. I, I think I got that one. I think I may have gotten this one after the fact, to be yeah. honest with you, after we moved in. So I kind of, I kind of had a one shot on that one. So I worked yeah. it out. So that's my pick. Very nice. Rob's second pick. My second pick is my cheat for the day. Oh. It has to do with Jason. And it's a cheat because there's actually some stories here. Quick story. This is the... This, okay, this first one here... Oh, sorry. This is the... Uh, I double-checked with JT to make sure about which Jason it was. This is the NECA uh, figure. Um, I'm a big fan of NECA. They make great uh, figures. They do. That's a really good one. And um, this is... this. I double-checked with JT to be sure. This is Friday 13th Part 4. Let me the see The final his chapter. Okay, he's, he's got, got the, the, he's got got the, the thing cut. in there. Yeah. And apparently he knew it was his... Um, was supposed to be his last movie, so he put on his good clothes. Uh, Sunday for clothes. this one, yeah, got his, his Sunday, Sunday got his Sunday best on for his what he thought was going to be his final movie appearance. But um, it's a it's a really good uh, figure, and I, I I'm a sucker for an accessory, and it comes with um, his mother's uh, gravestone, um, Pamela Voorhees. That's a very very nice. Yes, it's got some heft to it. Uh, now and then, this other figure over here is from Friday Thirteenth Part Six. This is a McFarlane Toys. Uh, figures. I bought it at the same time I bought the Leatherface figure. It's a movie maniac. He had his own poster. It's a great sculpt, great pose. Uh, Jason does have a little bit more of a superhero physique uh, on this one than he did this, but it's just the detail in this, on the skin, is just really well done. Um, And uh, the blade's a little too shiny, but it's still a very good, very bloody, very detailed uh, figure. And now for the story that I find interesting about Other than that. the fact that I'm terrified of this figure right yeah, over here. Exactly. <laughs> the um, uh, This Jason here, uh, one, one little quick trivia note about it. This was one of the last items. I bought this on my last trip to Toys R Us oh, wow. before they closed. Or sad. Up. This was one of my last. This was one of my last purchases at um, Toys R Us on one of uh, mine and Melinda's Christmas trips to savannah nothing like celebrating the birth of jesus yeah. with, uh, with a mass Jason. murderer yeah well he did come back from the no never mind. okay well um, <laughs> um, okay now here's the interesting story i had this figure uh for years but on the when we when we uh, built our house and we moved um the mcfarland figure he it had a the the mask the hockey mask um, actually presses onto his face because mm-hmm. it's actually in Friday the 13th Part 6 uh, his a nice little detail McFarlane put in the straps from the hockey mask had actually melded kind of into his head into his skin yeah. so McFarlane actually put the hockey mask it was a it was a press on feature well in the move that mask got lost disappeared and honestly Jason is the mask so yeah. I don't for a long time I didn't display him because I didn't, you didn't like I just him. didn't like yeah. I just don't want Let me to see display, just, I just don't want to display him like that. Yeah, it's kind of nasty. Well, so cut to years later, I buy this uh, NECA figure, and lo and behold, the NECA figure, they give great accessories, and this particular one came with an additional mask. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought, well, let me see. So I got my McFarlane figure back out of storage, and it fits perfectly. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know it wasn't made for it nope. so not only did Toys R Us gift me with this very uh, good uh, part 4 Jason it also allowed me to once again display proudly my Todd McFarlane toys 
uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Six, Jason. And this so. NECA figure, uh, like if you're if you're if you're thinking about getting one or the other, I would easily personally, yeah. If I had to choose one, I would choose this NECA figure. Oh yeah, NECA NECA is a great company. This articulation, first of all, is nice and it's hidden. Yeah. Uh, they kind of hid the pants articulation and the wrinkles, which is I think yep. great. I love when they do that. Yeah. Look at his, um, his face. Oh my God. How good is that? Oh, that is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is see. I've been I've hey, been that's avoiding. That's the face. Look, there's the. Um, oh, the machete scar, yeah. Yep. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, that is, they, they did this extremely well. And that helmet yep. fits perfect. It is, and it lines up with the injury. Yep. Oh, man, this is so stinking yeah, good. Um, NECA does great figures, and they're reasonable. Yeah. They're very they, reasonable. They are. They're, I mean, they, they did, these are jointed, these are almost mm -hmm. like ball jointed legs. Yeah. So, um, and it can stand on its own. Yeah, it's got good balance. Yeah. Um, this one is, yeah, no, I will, I'll let you, yeah, there you go. It stands on its own. Um, and it does have the soft plastic where the jacket is so that there's, it, no matter where you put him or how you have this displayed and where the elbow joints are. That's nice. Yeah. You know, this, this reminds me of my, um, uh, of that. They did such a good job of that, uh, archer finger of mm -hmm. the enterprise that I've got. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. that. Yeah. I've seen it. And they, they did such you a good job a of time. masking that. Yeah. And that's, I've got a few NECA figures yeah. too, but if I had to choose between, the McFarlane on this one and the NECA, I would choose the NECA. I'm with Chris on it, and they don't they don't put a big round joint nope. on the elbow. Nope, they cover the they have yep. the articulation. Rob and I went off pretty hard on uh, Hasbro uh, last week for doing that. There's those jointed that is, and and they and, and uh, you know, um, you know, when you see the Spider Man, it's mm -hmm. it's like he's got barbells all over his body where the joints are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's ridiculous. Yep. So. As you can tell, we we absolutely hate uh, on those jointed figures. So it's it's a great display of that. That's yeah. awesome. And that's my second pick. My two Jasons. All right. Chris's third pick. All right. For my third pick, um, I chose the McFarlane again, the Monster Series, nineteen ninety eight. Uh, this again is a figure that hits all the stops for me. It's it really does. It has, um, again, an opening sarcophagus. I yeah. love that. I love a good sarcophagus. It does. I, it has that opening sarcophagus. And the mummy, of course, looks... He's got a, a hanging jaw there. See yeah. that? A hanging you jaw. Know, Adam, that's probably the best looking... I think I like that figure. Representation of a classic monster out of this out of this series, out of any of them. You do. That's yeah. one of your. That's one of your. That's big a good ones. one. Yeah. Well, you know, Owen, it's kind of interesting because on this one, um, the mummy looks a little bit like uh, looks a little bit like Eddie from Iron Maiden. He's got a little bit of that yeah, that face going on, you know. Um, and they did they for, again. This hits all the beats for me. They they've got the sarcophagus. You open it up. It it opens great. It mm. it sorry, mummy fits inside. Yep. And you've got the painting. You've got the hieroglyphics yep. inside of it and whatnot. Um, you've got I, I don't know why they thought this was a thing, but they added a play feature with snakes. You know? snakes. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And it's rubbery, so yeah. it's kind of nice. <laughs> um, you know, it digs in, and, and the mouth kind of opens there. It's kind of cool. But uh, they've got the little, it's you know, a little. I'm, again, I'm kind of a sucker with all this. Uh, and oh, and look at that. That is actually, it's a trap door to the snakes. Ah. So it pulls back. Ah, okay. Look at that. That's cool. And you can see the uh, victim uh, pieces probably it, a little yep. skull down there, a little below. That's kind of cool. That is cool. So you, they've got that little action feature play set, which is which I'm 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 a big sucker on trap doors. That takes me all the way back to the He Man yep. uh, Castle Gates Gray Skull. Yep. And uh, you know the thing is is that that uh, it's got does it, these open? I wonder. No, that does no, not no. open. Nope. I didn't. Yeah, know I had I had this. Not. This is another one. This is another place that I had that didn't survive. It didn't survive the move. It didn't survive oh. the move. Or actually, I think I don't know. Either, either they either didn't have survived the mood, or I let JT play with them when he was oh, so just he a little. Play with he was just kid. a little fellow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the kind of thing that won't break. You know, yeah. it, it is. Um, so again, it it hits all the stops for me. I absolutely love it. I love the uh, the the color on it. They've got the sand just right. They've got the aging done just right. Uh, Rob, like you said, that's a killer. Uh, yeah. Almost almost looks like a crotchety old man. Yeah, you darn kids. Yeah, well, you darn kids stay out of my mouth, you know. And I got, you know, you, when you open something like that and you hear a creak with McFarlane, you go, "Oh mm. God, would that just break?" You know, <laughs> that's true. It is very true. Never and they, force it. Yeah. They designed this in a way he like. You, I love that. 
Yeah. He's coming out. He's, he's just like the Dracula. Yeah. Again, they framed everything so yeah. so well. And what, what's interesting to me about this, Rob, and, and you can, since you do dioramas way more than I do, mm-hmm. I tend to buy them and like let them be what right. they are. But one thing I appreciate about, appreciate about dioramas is this, is that you are working within, and I've, I've been a fan of dioramas since the very first time I went to a museum and I saw the a little, yeah. you know, diorama. Ooh, what is yeah. this? You know, I could play with that. Well, the one thing that really, you know, it just is is cool to me is that you've got such a limited space and time to work with that you've got to frame something up in a scene and that little bitty scene has to tell a story. Yep. So to me that when I when I see something like this, I'm just I, I love seeing that little yeah. frame, that little you know, everything like that. And and this is just one of it, it you you got the trapdoor, the snakes, you've got the yeah. coffin. I mean the sarcophagus, he's coming out of it. He's got his uh, staff. You've got the other mummy of the of the statue in there. It's just, it's just killer. I just, I just yeah. love everything about it. It's this. just, yeah, it's just they, they just make they make good display pieces. He does, and and that's really this was probably four and up as well. But again, you you really want to display it on this yeah. one. This is not a, a lot of, lot of play small with. things that can be swallowed or stuck in ears or. Yeah, I would, I, you know, I, I don't have kids. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, we don't have kids, but I'm curious. Like, what age do kids really stop putting things they can kind of get hurt with in their mouth? I guess it depends on the kids. I, yeah. I, my two, they they, really, they never really swallowed much. Abby swallowed a um, penny one time and it got stuck in her throat. No kidding, really? Yeah, that was That's scary. Terrifying. Because she comes up to me, she's like two or so, and she comes up to me with this panicked look on her face and she's making no sound. Oh, my Oh my God. Yeah. Abby's not making any yeah, sound. Exactly. Oh, wow. and, I, and I actually stuck my finger in her mouth. And I hooked the coin, and I actually felt a rush of air come Holy over my head. Moly. It scared me to death. Oh my god, yeah. dude! That today's horror story is yes. brought to you. But I didn't know that. Holy yeah. crap! That was scary. Um, you know, one time, I mean, well, I guess everybody, you know, you eat a starlight mint or whatever. You're still putting small things in your mouth. Yeah. And that, that happened to me with a starlight mint. It went down, and it was weird. I finally got it down, but I thought it felt like it was in my my, my mm-hmm. throat for a good couple hours after because I, I found out afterwards that what happens is sometimes bigger items can bruise your esophagus. Yeah, and you're hurts. sitting there. Oh, it was the worst pain ever. That happened man. to me with a frosted flake. Uh, a frosted and, uh, flake. I swallowed a frosted flake that hadn't that was still hard. I guess sharpened. And oh, it was. Uh, it got stuck in my throat, uh, and it. I, I to me, it felt like. Little claws just tearing at <laughs> yeah, it, went right. down. You know? Oh man, the, that that like adds a new that back. adds a new uh, meaning to the Halloween frosted yeah, flakes. You exactly. know, Halloween frosted flakes. Like you're they, dead. <laughs> Booberry got nothing on me. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> that's it's funny. Like I'm a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> They're grave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see if the copyright gets that on YouTube. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. All right. Copyright. So uh, my third pick is the 1998. Uh, McFarlane Monster Series, The Mummy. Rob's third pick. My third pick is another NECA figure, and it is my most recent addition to my collection. Okay. I bought it uh, earlier this week. Because you you knew this show was coming. You're well, like, I no, got to have a little bit at blame. Uh, the reason why, um, like I said, I've... In the past few years, I've, I've grown to be more of a Halloween fan, the mm-hmm. movie series. And so I did not have a Michael Myers. Really? Nope. Never had a Michael Myers. Had a Jason, uh, but not had a, uh, a Leatherface. You, you do have a, you do have like a Freddy, the, too, right? The Massacre. No, I don't have a Freddy. Really? No. Okay. Um, so Walmart had one one of these uh, uh, Halloween figures uh, left, NECA figure, and I looked online, and they were selling for like $50, $55. Really? And Walmart still had it for 30 Wow. So I was like, okay. Holy so moly. This is from the 2018 movie that just that came out in 2018. Uh, so being wait, a good parent, me... Was that Rob Zombie's second one? No, no, no. This is the 2018 Jamie, Jamie, Lee, Jamie Lee, Lee Curtis. Okay, she came where, back. That's right. And the Halloween movie franchise has the most messed up continuity. Oh, right, right. I mean, because like... Yeah. In one continuity, there's Halloween one and two are together. Or one, two, then three was a totally different thing. Had nothing to do with Michael Myers. Really? Then there was four, five, and six, or four, five, and Halloween Resurrection, H2O, yeah, made one that. straight continuity. Then they went back and said, no, uh, one and two and six are the actual continuity, or seven, or something like that. Then they went back and said, 
with this 2018 movie, they were like, no, just the first one and this one are one story. That's what we call retconning. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So this is from the latest movie, uh, and it's I took uh, JT and Abby to see it okay. uh, back when going to movies was still a thing. When you could. Yeah, when you could. And this is from that movie. Uh, and again, like I said, I love accessories. It comes with accessories. Here is Judith Meyer's um, gravestone. That's uh, a good finish. In his hand is his uh, go-to butcher knife. And for those who have seen the movie, um, and spoiler alert if you hadn't, I really don't care, um, is the head of a guy that, I think it was one of the cops or something that he... Um, takes out. Takes out and uh, turned his head into a pumpkin. Oh, God. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I want to ask you about that because when Rob... Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Why well, he explains his toy to me? Yeah. Okay, so when Rob showed it to me, I, I went, "Oh my God, the teeth are separate. You can see them inside. The eyes are hollowed mm-hmm. out, yeah. and inside you can see that they've they've really gone the lengths to add the teeth. Yeah. After the fact. Yeah. To make them recess back in there yeah. behind the gum line. Yeah. Michael the, Michael made him a pumpkin. Out okay. Of a, well, that explains a, a human head. Why this? You know what you could do? You could take your little LED, LED and, put it and there. stick it in there, make man. And this guy, could, that's creepy. Yeah. And in a. And then it also came with this pumpkin, which is a very happy pumpkin. He's got two hearts for eyes and a heart for a nose and a big smile on his face. And it comes with that. And, and it's got light up feature. We'll get close ups of all this. Uh, I just, love that. Just a crazy thing for such a uh, uh, one of the most classic movie uh, monster killers of all time. No, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you when you, when I saw you bring in that pumpkin. I immediately thought about stabbing you because uh, <laughs> um, because I I googled pumpkin accessory this week because uh-huh. I wanted to have something like it because yeah. I, I like I like your you know we were talking about the when we last week after we did the, the trick or treat trick or treat yeah. trailer I'm sitting there God I really want a pumpkin thing to put with my figures and all this kind yeah. of stuff so I'm starting to Google and then I saw this and went what it comes with a pumpkin you know the, and it lights up yeah and it can stay it can stay on. Yeah, that's and it'll cool. start flickering too. What? See? Oh my gosh! It flickers. Oh my gosh! How Little cool LED that? and battery. That's so stinking cool. Yep. Oh my gosh! That is okay. This is NECA. NECA. A plus. NECA. Ultimate Michael Myers. I think they call you it. You know what? And it is because they did the exact same thing they did with yep. Jason's legs, and I mean it really is, man. Yep. And that they did a great job. It comes mask. with uh, two sets, maybe three sets of hands, two heads. Why? Uh, one one is. Um, the eyes, this one, the eyes are black. Right. Oh, and the other, uh, you Because that's one of the things with Michael. And do you know, and this is one of the things I, I like about Michael Myers, do you know his nickname? Um, I do not. Michael Myers has the coolest nickname of any monster uh, slasher out there. What's that? It was given to him by Dr. Loomis, uh, his psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. The yeah. bald guy that yeah. was in the first one, right? Um. He refers to Michael Myers as the shape. That's right. I have heard of yeah. that. Yeah, the shape. He's, he's not a man. He's the shape of a man. He's mm. evil in the shape of a man. That is actually pretty And he's called the shape. And they started, even in credits of movies, the, of the movies, started listing him as the shape. No kidding. And I don't know. There's just something about, so cool about yeah. that. That, you know, here is the shape. And it just works. It just works so, so well. Right. You know, I think that when you talked about this, I think that these horror movies can be redone over and over again because... The stories are really good, and I think they can take them and, and they can do. Yeah. Uh, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's simply terrifying. Yeah, you know. So I mean, this, and like I said, you can't get no simpler than nope. uh, overalls yeah. and a mask. Dickies, a Dickie suit, and yep. <laughs> uh, you know, and a, and a yeah. white. Uh, oh, JT mask. Two Halloweens ago, uh, JT's a lot like Chris. He loves to dress up for Halloween. I love it. And he went as Michael Myers. You we told him, him that. a mask, and he got. Yeah. And he got him a suit, and we went over. We live out in the country, so we don't get trick or treaters. We don't either. Um, so we went to his girlfriend's neighborhood, mm-hmm. and so JT was um, hanging out there, dressed up as Michael Myers, you know. And um, uh, cars are coming by, people are coming by and getting candy and this, that, and the other. Everything's going good. And toward the end of the night, this car comes up and parks, and it sits there for a few minutes, and then. Um, uh, the mother gets out and walks up to us. She said, my kids won't get out because of him. <laughs> and pointed at JT. Yeah. And uh, so uh, JT uh, uh, dressed as Michael Myers. Because JT's 
JT's a he's a tall fellow. Is he six two? Yeah, JT's got a big frame. He's um six two, six uh, two, wide shoulders, and also he when when and he was convincing. And he was so, the shape. So the little kids, the 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 reward of candy was not enough. Okay. To make those two little kids, brother yeah. and sister, but you know, walk up to the house. You know, next to Michael Myers. And I think we should talk about we should definitely talk about Halloween at some point. You know, just the yeah. whole event. But on that, that's kind of the whole cool thing of it. You, it's the unknown and the yeah. thrill of being scared. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting reward of candy, but it is the thrill of being scared, and, and is the is the payoff. Yeah. Is the reward worth yep. the the price you pay, the trick or the trick? Yeah. And, and most of you have probably already seen this because if I've seen it, I'm not a big, uh, oh, did you see that latest clip guy right. or anything like that? So a lot of times I have to depend on my kids. But two or three years ago, Jimmy Kimmel did a thing where he had a guy dress up as Michael Myers at Halloween. And it was basically like a Santa Claus thing where your kid could go up and get uh, sit in Michael's lap and have oh. a picture taken. And that is, it is the cutest video. Um, because like some kids are scared of him and some kids are, some kids are like, nope, I ain't going up there. And some are like, uh, and then like this one little girl, she's just like, and she just, she just runs up and gets in his lap and she's like, and I want this. That's and this Abby. And that. Yeah. That's you Abby. Know, not scared yeah, at all. So, Abby. Uh, so they have search, wait, search wait. that out. So is Michael Myers as Santa Claus? No, not really. It's, um, it was just that setup, like a photo op at the okay, mall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you can set up. Oh gosh. Yeah. And so like the, but they have him behind a wall. Mm hmm. So when the kids come around the wall, they see Michael Myers. Okay. The mask, the suit, everything. Oh, and he doesn't yeah, say anything. Yeah. Oh, God. He just stands there and he yeah. sits down. And they have the option of getting in his lap to have a photo taken. And it's just one of those <laughs> things where you, they take the kids' reactions to seeing him. So just type in Jimmy Kimmel, Michael Myers, I'm gonna, I'm Halloween. And it's a it's, and it's really it's really quick yeah. uh, thing. Uh, so Chris might get up and post it. I don't know. It is. I might. I might be yeah. there. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I'll share with the... The the interesting thing about the when we post these videos and whatnot, uh, depending on how the algorithms work, how YouTube has these algorithms, um, they can find copyright and trademark stuff right mm -hmm. away. And I mean, within five minutes of me uploading a video, they've already found. They can tell you uh, who published which part of which movie. Uh, if they share publishing, it'll share the publishers listed. Uh, the publishers listed, and um, if it. It, even it goes so far as to tell you what part of the the video that we did, where it's at. So it's kind of interesting that it does that. But yeah, yeah, and well, with even something like Jimmy Kimmel, you know, when they, when they share properties, when different companies share properties, yeah. and that's why you know I would imagine it's like you can make a movie out of a, you can make a werewolf movie. You can go tomorrow and make a werewolf movie. You can go make a yeah. movie about a mummy. You can go make a movie about a mon you can go make a movie about Frankenstein because that book is already passed. It's yeah. already public domain. You can you can actually uh, make your own Thor movie. That's right, because that's because Greek, Thor is Greek god. Thor yeah. is not property of Marvel. Nope, no, it's not. Thor is um, he's property of the world. That's right, that's right. And so you have public domain and whatnot, and so but but then when you have these these terrifying things like this, you know, that's of course that's one of the reasons they want to keep making these movies. Yeah, because you maintain copyright when you do. Yeah. If you go so many years without using a, a, a franchise brand, you lose yeah. it, which is why. Ford will continue to make the Mustang or some yeah. car with that name. Um, we have to renew like Plaid Dot. I had to renew that every every yep. five years at first. You don't then want to fall it goes, public domain. Yep. Yeah, then it then it goes a little bit longer. You can oh, stretch out a little. The music bit. question. Um, mm -hmm. The John Carpenter's brilliant little. Uh, you know he composed. Whenever he makes a movie, he's a music guy. You know, I he composes that. his own music for the movie. Really? Yeah. I knew that he did some of that. No, I didn't know that he, big time. Is he the main? Guy. Really? I, I believe so. But anyway, he wrote the Halloween theme. I didn't dando don't dando. Yeah. 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 And he plays it on a piano, I it sounds like. That's right. And uh can you play it on guitar? You can, yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I know you did the Mario thing one time. Right, that'd be, yeah. That'd be cool to hear you playing that on the Yeah, on yeah, the I, I could play that on guitar. I mean I've never tried it, but it's not the the structure of it is enough to where the bass notes don't move a whole lot and you yeah. still got the treble over it, so you could do that. That'd yeah. be cool. Especially, might, especially if you did a Halloween show. I'll work that yeah, that's right. I'll yeah. work that up for you. Yeah. Maybe I'll work it up and then and then I'll get the copyright police right yeah. on me. What? <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> so, for Rob's third pick, I go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Today on Gen X Thought, it's just me. It's just Rob. <laughs> Chris says, hey, can yeah. you help me? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, now we're getting ready for my next pick. Chris's fourth pick. All right, and for my fourth pick is 1997's Werewolf PlayStation, uh, playset. Play I can't station. speak today. Yeah. 1997 PlayStation. No, PlayStation. No, werewolf. It's, it's really, really old. The graphics are fantastic. Very mm -hmm. 3D. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's the it's the McFarlane 1997 monster series, the Werewolf. 
And I'm going to go ahead and show, I'm going to flip this around and Rob and I are going to start dissecting yeah. this because this one really has a lot of cool things. Yeah, I really like this one. One of the things I like about this is how he did the disjointed arms and yeah. legs. It's a bone that actually you can attach You can it. put it back you on. You can. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can do cool. it. You can snap it in there. I, I really don't do it a lot because yeah. I don't want to wear off the side paint, say, but, it, yeah. but it does. Yeah, it that's will, cool. It will go in there. So the cool thing about that is this guy has got the biggest hands ever. Uh, these these hunting mittens or whatever. Yeah. But here's what I like about this. Not only do you have, I mean, the tree yep. fits perfectly and closes. Oh yeah. Like this werewolf has been sort of storing bodies in there, and you know, and he's he's kind of got some some uh, some street cred in the past. You see a guy already already gone down in there yep. and died. Um, if you turn it around, which I'm going to show you this in a second. If you turn it around, you have. I'm going to move his little hat. You have in the back where you see a little snake where the body can go down there and shoot through oh, the back. Yeah. So I love that. Comes with a little hunting rifle. That's a serious hunting rifle. Well, yeah, it looks like what the A team used to use <laughs> the little uh, Ruger. Uh, yeah. You know, the. the, the Fire 200 rounds and never, yeah, hit, the, never little, hit nobody. Yeah, the Ruger 223 that the A team used to use, which is like, okay, well, if you're hunting werewolves. Yeah. And it's and it seems like he's hunting werewolves. Now, here's what's cool to me about this. Let me, me kind of add a little things and break this down. Mm -hmm. First of all, his hat does. His head comes off too, and he's got a neck bone. So there's uh, that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to show that. I'll show yeah. in a picture, but I'm not going to do that. His his hat obviously sits on there just kind of freely. Uh, I chose to keep his head on because I think the pic, I think he looks more menacing with it on. Yeah. He's falling out the tree. It's busted open. His arm attaches with a little bone. Yep. So I love that. I, I uh, they make it hang right there. They've got a little thing right here on the side. Okay. So again, framing this up. You see how they've got a little, like a little vine hanging there, yeah. and they did that to cover that a vine up. or a rope. It's a vine, okay. And they did that to cover the seam of where the tree has to be. Uh, you know, when oh, yeah. they were molding it, yeah, they would have a mold that would have got this. So they did the seam to do that. And of course, the cool thing is, is the way they've got this this werewolf where you kind of can set him up uh, on this. Let's see if I can kind of do this. Um, yeah, where where he's he's like lashing out. He's mm -hmm. coming around. Yeah. And it, it, there's a weird little thing right there, and it says, Richard C., he got what he deserved. <laughs> and I'm like, why is there a little mausoleum yeah. set up to this guy? And so I, so earlier today, I, or yesterday, I, 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 I was like, okay, well, is that open or something? Because in some of the scenes you see in yeah. the toy, it's recessed back a little more. So naturally, I pushed it and, and, and popped it off, and so I had to glue it back on. <laughs> so, know, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of went through the, the, the ringer with yeah. it. So he's like a he's got like a little bit of squirrel or chipmunk in him where he's storing food for the winter. <laughs> and, uh, this is that's the best. Never knew never knew werewolf did that. Best that is the best description I've ever. Yeah. Heard. This this is a werewolf slash a chipmunk, chipmunk slash squirrel. Yeah. He is squirreling food away right. for the winter, yeah. and he's got his little his little hut here, and he's yeah. got his little tree, and he's like, I just close you, I yeah. close you back on in yeah. there and shut you in. Oh man. Yeah, but I, you know, this is one of those that for me, this one, it, it hits all the beats it's again. Good. Yeah, I, I never had this one. It's, it's a nice playset. Yeah, it is. And this one, this one again, it frames up when you when you look at it. Yeah. You know, like that. It just it, it, the angles are there. Everything is really coming out. Um, McFarlane went so far with this one as the the hunter. Richard C., I'm assuming that's who it is. I mean, unless the world got really busy making <laughs> yeah. a... He's like, oh, look, I'm going to kill this guy next week. And I'm going to yeah. go ahead and make him a tombstone to freak him out when he walks up. Yep. So uh, the werewolf is very nerdy. Uh, but anyway, so so he he still makes all these figures jointed. So the, yeah. the, he definitely intended for people to have different poses and whatnot. But he went out of his way to really take these bones mm -hmm. and to make it look like a two-part bone, you know, like your... Uh, your your femur or whatever in his arm and then just coming on up and then it would joint there with a, with a shoulder and, and just maybe your maybe your socket yep. he really really did a uh, a really good job with that and I, it just it looks really great so i love that i love he did it with his leg you know and and it, it's just a really cool cool play set i like that yeah so that's a good one so my fourth pick is the 1997 mcfarlane wolfman set and this is definitely the only one I own. I have not had to replace this one. I have not had to replace this one. Rob's fourth pick. All right, my fourth pick. I am staying in the world of NECA. And one yeah. of my favorites, Little Sam mm -hmm. from Trick or Treat. Uh, if you listened to the show last week, you heard me gush over 
Uh, you were drooling the movie, about it. Trick you, or treat. I still got to watch it. You, okay, yeah. so that's you're going to show me that at your house. I want to yeah. see that. Yes, yeah. We'll, we're going to actually say. Take the time. She did say, well, go watch it at Rob's house. <laughs> we're that blood over here. Yeah. Uh, this is just a cool figure. He's in he's in those old time style pajamas. Oh, that's with what's the, creepy the about The butt him. flap and uh, <laughs> uh, full thing. And he's got this creepy mask on and... You look right here, and he's, uh, there's a lollipop that he's taking a bite Might out of. Uh, yeah. And look right here. Yep. Chocolate bar with a razor, razor sticking out. Mm -hmm. With a razor blade sticking yep. out. Um, and then he comes with his own little accessory. Like I said, love accessories. Uh, a flaming pumpkin. Mm. Uh, and this little Sam, not much action to him. Nope. Uh, you can move his arms a little bit. He's got some articulation in his arms. No articulation in his um, uh, legs. They do make one with more articulation, but it doesn't look this good. Right, I saw and, that, and they also make one with a felt suit. No, they the may. Suit. No, they do. They, they do. They yeah. do. I, I was researching it. again. Yeah. I was looking for pumpkins. I was so angry <laughs> that I didn't have a pumpkin, so I started researching this this uh, figure, and I saw this one, and they actually make one with a felt suit. Yeah, that's cool. But it well, it doesn't look. And I think good. I think now Hot Toys has made one or Sideshow. We have it? could could be wrong. Okay, but we'll I look. Think we'll have. look that up. I'll throw a little ticker down there in the bottom. Yeah. But um, trick or treat, Sam, little Sam. I think he's just called Sam. I call him little Sam because um, he's just kind of adorable. I think that's and, actually um, more terrifying. Actually. Yeah, little Sam. Yeah, and such. But he's a, he's a very uh, he's probably the least mainstream of the characters I've done. Well, by far he is. But uh, he's uh, he's one of my favorites. Uh, like I said, uh, if you haven't seen Trick or Treat, go see it. If you don't like it, that's okay. But I recommend it. I think you might like it if you like the horror genre. Well, okay, so we'll see. Him. Interesting thing about this is, and I'm chime in on this, and I, I love that pumpkin. Mm -hmm. I really want the traditional jack o' lantern, though. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the traditional. Something more like that. Yeah, like that. Um, but. Well, you have a 3D printer. I was actually thinking of that as you said it. Yeah. So I'm about, this is what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is happening. So the. Um, wow, that is amazing. Yeah. So the cool thing about this, here's what really terrifies me about this figure. Mm -hmm. Any time, and, th and I'll tell you why this is the way it is with me. I saw Night of the Scarecrow in the late seventies, early eighties when it came. Dark on, Night of the Scarecrow. When it came on TV. Yep. And it's about that guy they chased down and he hid in the scarecrow. I watched scarecrow. it about a year ago. Man, let me tell you. Still dude, effective. As as a seven eight year old Chris, whenever I saw that thing, it was either late seventies, early eighties. I guess it could have been six, could have been eight. I don't know. It uh, was. It was. I think it came out in eighty three. Okay, so there you go. Around yeah, okay, so the, the early eighties. And it was, it was on TV. Eighty three or eighty five. It, it came on, on TV. TV. Yeah, it was a yeah. TV movie. Okay, Dark so, Night of the Scarecrow. Oh man, and he because of the didn't he have the burlap mask? I think so because he um, he was a mentally handicapped. That's probably. right. That's he was right. played by Larry Drake, okay. who was who was Benny on L.A. Law, and he's if you've seen him, if 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 you pulled up a, when you pull up a picture of Larry Drake, you'll go, oh, I know that. Guy. I know that guy. Okay. Um, anyway. He did a good uh, job of that part. Yeah, he did really great. But the character he played on L.A. Law was mentally handicapped. Really? And he, um, so he, but I mean, he did that later. But, uh, but uh, he's, Larry Drake's a real good character actor. Huh. But um, the premise was he was, uh, he, lived, he lived in this, town. yeah, these bunch of uh, redneck white trash people wouldn't leave him alone. Right. And um, they got to, he was friends with this little girl. Uh, nothing untoward uh, and uh, they got to chasing him one day and so she was helping him hide and she said hide in the scarecrow so he actually put on the scarecrow's clothes and actually uh, got onto the uh, mm -hmm. cross yeah yeah well and then the the rednecks uh, white trash people find him and I'm gonna say more white trash cause uh, I know a lot of good rednecks a lot of good rednecks. They were good people. At the end of the end. So I'm not, I'm not, forget I said rednecks. This is white trash. More white people. trash. Yeah. Well, they find him and they see him in the suit and uh, they kill him. Yeah, I remember that. And they kill him. And then the rest of the movie Pitchfork, is... Pitchfork, right? Yeah. The rest of the movie is... Uh, I think it's shooting. Oh. Or something like that. Anyway. And then the rest of it is a revenge tale. Yeah. And yeah. well, and I gotta and, watch and that it's, again. It's done very well. Yeah, I gotta watch it again. But But here's the thing. I remember, no, I thought it was just called Night of the Scarecrow. Uh, it's Dark Night of the Scarecrow. Dark Night of the Scarecrow? Yep. Okay. So, I remember from being that being a kid and then seeing that burlap mask. And ever mm. since then, that freaking is just terrifying to me. Yeah. Like, the way the Scarecrow mask did in Batman was a really good take on that. Um, I don't know if you were at the Halloween party, the Platteween party I did years ago, where I was a Scarecrow on the front porch. Mm -hmm. And what I did was... 
I put my, I did the burlap mask, I did a hat, and I did my body, I did the straw hands and with gloves. So I looked like a, and I just yeah. leaned on the steps and just made it look like I was a prop. Yeah. You know, because I had another one that I propped up anyway. So I was one of the props. Well, you know, my good friend Jenny Dawn, uh, she comes out there and I go, how are you doing? You know, and I mean, I, I think that she was playing on uh, my demise shortly yeah. thereafter. So, you know, but that is terrifying. Yeah. It is just, it's terrifying. Well, a friend of my dad's used to dress up as a scarecrow. This was back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. He used to dress up as a scarecrow at Halloween and they would have a, uh, like an old recliner. Uh, so, sitting mm-hmm. on the path that it took the kids had to go by to get to the candy yep. and he would just be sitting there like he was just a stuff same thing I did. They'd, they'd have uh thank him and that's what he would do he would jump up and scare them oh, yeah. and one of jt's most effective uh, when he was a little fella about eight or nine years old we went and uh, he wanted to we were going to this little thing they had out at mill creek rec department uh, mm-hmm. we're having, having a halloween creek. thing yeah and a, a little contest so we went and we went looking for costumes and we came across a scream mask but it was burlap. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. And so we bought that. That's the only thing we bought. We bought, now I take it back. We bought that and a brown sheet. Okay. Went home. We had an old straw hat. We kind of cut it and roughed it up and put it on top of his head. And then we cut the sheet to just kind of be like a cloak over him and then tied it with a rope. Yeah. You got to do the uh, rope. You got to do the yeah, rope. One second place. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's awesome. Well, you know, and the thing is about that, like, if you go by the store window right now, if you look, last year I added, when uh, when Stranger Things got to be a really big thing, and it, you know, it kind of came out near the Halloween season anyway, the first year it came out, and I fell in love with it, and Ashley was really reluctant to watch it, but after <laughs> she got to, like, episode three, yeah. she got halfway in, and I thought she was really not into it, and I said... I said, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll just, we'll just turn off. She goes, no, 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 I got to find out what happens to Will or to Mike, you know, Will, Will. Yeah. And she, and she was, she was already just like, she was in, I went, well, I got her now. So the funny thing is though, because of that, I I bought some new mannequins for the window that I did 11 and Dustin, you know, in the window. And so last year I had one of the small mannequins. Well, I made it a little scarecrow. Mm-hmm. And I swear to God, that's scarier than a big scarecrow. Yeah. So that's what's so messed up about that guy. Oh, my mom. He's a little scarecrow. She does this thing. She, My dad made her some, uh, basically, uh, t- it's it's the shape of a cross. But, um, so she takes that and it's about three foot tall. Yeah. And she went, she goes to uh, Goodwill and buys some kids clothes. And so she uh, dresses up the cross with kids clothes and stuffs it full of stuff in. Yeah. Well, it's put scary shoes crack. on and everything. And then puts like a pumpkin head on it. Well, that's scary. And it, and it's and it's actually worse because it's actually a smiley pumpkin face. Right. Which makes it more terrifying. Right. And, uh, right. That's exactly right. Yeah. All of it. Just like the hearts and the eyes and the pumpkin and all yeah. that stuff. It's a little creepier. Oh, man. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah this, is, uh, this is a pretty good one. A good pick. Lil Sam. Lil Sam. Chris's final pick. All right, for my final pick today, I have chosen the McFarlane Monster Series. I believe this is the Sea Creature. I got this pulled up over here in 1998. So, that's right. This is the Sea Creature in 1998. Now, this one, again, you know, and I don't know if you like this, but when you buy stuff, when you start collecting, Mm -hmm. there are things about that that you like. Mm -hmm. There are things about that that, like I said said earlier, it kind of hits all the beats for me, you know, and all that. Um, the sea creature, believe it or not, this guy's my least favorite. The sea creature, I could, you know, he's okay. I mean, he's yeah. got the, the swivel arms. He's kind of okay looking, but it's, there's nothing about this. I'm not attached to this. Yeah. Um, I found this figure when I was looking for a Jaws, the McFarlane Jaws. Mm-hmm. So when I, I guess it was, you know, listed as one that I found out about it, you know, they got a little boat wheel there. Uh, the harpoon is, by the way, I haven't, I haven't tried this, but that I read on the instructions that it said the harpoon actually shoots. Uh-huh. Um, I haven't tried it yet though, but I think why I really bought this, I know I, why you bought it. I, the same I, reason I would have bought you, it. You, okay. The, the, this obviously has the little guy with the helmet. Yeah. I've, I've talked about how I love the mirror helmet. By the way, look at that. He has a little hair. There's hair. I don't know. <laughs> I, I've never, I didn't even know That's when Carlin ever had any flocking. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That is weird. It is weird. So the helmet. But I'll tell you why I really honestly believe I bought this. I believe I bought this figure and this whole setup because as a kid, when we would go to somebody's house and had an aquarium, there was always a dude in there that looked about like yeah. that. The little the little deep sea diver yep. with a deep six helmet on, the brass, you know, uh, deep six diving helmet. 
And he would always, that's where the water was coming out. That's where the yeah. refresher was coming out. We pump in new water. And then there was another one with a skeleton and like a yeah. coffin, and it would move because yeah. of the water bubbles. I always love those. I like, yeah. those like, I like those little place, pieces in the aquarium more than I did the fish. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So my whole thing was, oh man, I think I like to take that out and you know go play with it. You yeah. know, that was my thing. So, and sometimes you would see the, uh, I think there might have been a, you know, the skeleton ones were cool to me, mm-hmm. and the and the deep sea diver was boat cool wrecks and things like that. The what? Ship, yeah, the shipwrecks. Ship and... Yeah, the shipwrecks were great. Yeah. So for me, this was a nostalgia piece for me, even though I never had. I, we we probably had an aquarium at some point. We did, but I didn't have it with all this kind of stuff and all the little cool features you'd have. Yeah. But this is a nostalgia piece to me because of the shipwreck stuff and the stuff you get in an aquarium as a kid. Yeah. You go to other people's houses and see it, and you can see there's some silver, some gold treasure down there, starfish. You see another skeleton. Maybe this guy didn't make it out of this shipwreck. Yeah. Now, um, the boat actually comes out of it as a, as a separate piece. And you can kind of... Nothing really down in there. Well, you can see some stuff, details yeah. in there. That's kind of cool. I guess the insinuation is that the sea creature caused all this damage. Yeah, I guess that's... Oh, yeah, that is that is spring-loaded, Rob. Yep. Yep, that's spring-loaded. So there you go. The sea... Yeah, yeah the insinuation is that the sea creature caused this damage and... To further that narrative, if you will, I'm going to have to work with that. <laughs> ah, everything's falling apart. Oh, there we go. It's in there now. So, the to further that narrative is this. Look. Look at the guy's arm. Yeah. He he's got been mangled, mangled, man. He already got yeah, hit. Yeah, this thing's been after him. I don't know that it comes yeah. off. I've always been fascinated with, um, what do you, what do you, I forget what you call that. What? I know it's a scuba, it's an early scuba suit, but it I, has a the specific brass helmet, name. Yeah. The brass helmet. Yeah. But I, I've always it, been fascinated with that look. Because uh, one, I just thought it looked cool. Uh, and then two, um, every Scooby Doo episode when they they would do the a little montage at the beginning, there'd be that guy who was in one of those. Yeah, and I, I remember that that as well. Yeah, your your yeah. visibility in those. I don't know if you, if you ever put one on. No, your visibility is obviously restricted because you're in a big old brass helmet. Yeah, brass bell is it called a bell? That might it's something bell. We'll, yeah. we'll look at it. We'll look. That I think up. you're right. I think it's something bell. It might be brass but, bell. And my my uncle had a cooler in the seventies. They had the most kitschy furniture and the kitschy stuff that you would decorate yeah. a house with my uncle had that as a brass it was Ooh, a cooler that's cool yeah. Yeah. oh you would like it you yeah. would like it Bra- and brass makes sense because brass will be lighter and it wouldn't rust that's right well it, when it t- brass tarnishes it looks awesome yeah you know now look at this i just discovered this so not only could you shoot it you were mm-hmm. intended to look at that <laughs> like this is a <laughs> hard plastic yeah, that's like no it'll be safe gotta be safe for kids that's pretty good because nothing like nothing says like playing with your toys and your children yeah. Like, you know, shooting a javelin through a uh, sea monster's heart. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, with the McFarlane stuff, you had, you, you can see how I'm kind of working with this. I mean, you, you had, you definitely had a way yeah. that you had to put that in there. So is this supposed to be his rendition of Creature from the Black Lagoon? I don't think so, because this looks like an ocean, ocean yeah, creature. Yeah, because Creature was, yeah. he was. Well, he and was there's a, a starfish right He was there. a river monster. He was. And this guy's clearly in the ocean. I like Creature. Um, like I said, this was the... 97 series this is going back that early year that the dracula was from yeah so his diorama was you know was pretty epic um now i'm curious why did, why did you think you knew i liked it i thought it was the guy the I guy just, the i guy. just thought because you uh you're a lot like me you, i could i could even though we've never talked about it i could see you being um uh very uh into that that Scuba suit. Oh, if I'd have had this and, uh, as a kid, I'd have played this yeah, in the tub. Because I mean, on, honestly, that could be a GI Joe figure. It could. Yeah, uh, he's got the same yeah, kind of look. You know, he does. The the movability, obviously, the limited McFarlane act, act you know, posability is just not there. Yeah. He really kind of designed these as a, you know, as a diorama. That's what he. That's what he wanted. But yeah. you know, you could play with it if you. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, you had the four, four points for five points for articulation, like yeah. a old Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. Which is fine. But you guys, if we can take you back just a little bit here. Um, you know, if you guys remember, and I know that people are, uh, you know, that are watching people like uh, that are collectors, like um, uh, Robbie Bragdon. I know you watch the show, and um, and I know uh, Tracy, you're watching. Uh, Michael Henley, you're a lot younger than Rob and I, and I know you watch this show a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out here. Before McFarland Toys came out with that paint scheme, the only time you really saw anything like this was if somebody hadn't been doing uh, small dioramas in a comic shop. Right. I mean, there there were no mass produced toys of that quality. Not really. So when not play sets. Yeah, not play sets. Like I mean, models. Yeah. Yeah. But you had to paint it. Oh yeah, I hate painting. Yeah, it. and I didn't either. I wouldn't paint it. I want. I'm I'm paying you to paint it. And you nothing know? made me happier than the day they stopped uh, shipping collectibles, ships, and play sets with stickers. 
Right. They came painted already. They came painted. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I hated, I hated putting on stickers. In G.I. Joe, you had to. G.I. Yeah. Joe toys, you had to put stickers on. Thank God they, they airbrush them on yeah. now because they wanted you to put stickers on there. And as I got older, I realized, hey, you know what? I'm just not going to put these stickers on. Well, what I, learned, what I learned, finally learned with stickers, especially the small ones, um, the small stickers, was actually I would take a, um, a long bladed knife mm-hmm. and I'd put the sticker on the very the knife, end of it and then, and then I'd ease it on there and put it off. Yeah. Pro tip. Yeah, that's a pro tip there. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I think that, for, so for me, when, they, when I was in my 20s when this stuff came out, I would have been 23 and 97. So, but I want to say that, yeah. yeah, and I was I was actually, or no, I was, I was like probably early, so I was 24 when the, or 22 when this came out. Mm-hmm. Still in college, and, and that, that's when I picked up the vampire one. That's when I picked up the Dracula one. So you one. have them all. I do. I have all the 1997 series, and I have all the 1998 series. I had four of them, but only only two have survived that are still on display. The move or the kids. And the move or the either. kids. And I have the, I have the two-headed monster thing left from that play set that I still have on display. Well, you can use that with something else, too. Because it's a cool, it's a cool uh, figure. The two play sets I have on display is um, Frankenstein and Hunchback. Yeah, and I've seen your Hunchback, too. Yeah. Yeah, that they they did again. What McFarlane did, if you guys are into this kind of stuff and you're in in the collection of, of that series, uh, you again, you can still get it for pretty reasonable prices on eBay at the time yeah. of this. Uh, for some reason, in the package, there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, a lot of them out in the package. I, I don't know why that they're you know. I guess that maybe there was a maybe kind of brushed over. I think I, my guess is they never. I think the majority of them hit the direct market and they never really made it to the. Um, uh, mass market like Walmart so I think a lot of them got out there in the public um, and also you got to remember in the 90s people were kind of on a, especially in comic book shops they were especially on a um, collecting craze mm-hmm. where let's keep everything packaged that's that's when it all that's kind right. of started that's right. mint on card and stuff like that Right. so people card. a lot Was of that really people, when that started MOC it, that's, when, that's when it really started in, in earnest um the '90s was infamous for, uh, in the in the comic book world, for uh, gimmicks and oh, don't open it because it'll lose all its value. Right. And so right. people and McFarlane was huge at that time. So people were huge. buying yeah. multiple copies of his uh, toys and not opening them, thinking they were going to shoot uh, through the roof. And they shoot didn't. through the roof, and, and thank God they didn't actually, not, because yeah. that 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 extends the other you know the other collectors. Uh, they did a, a really cool job to put. Uh, barnacles under yeah. the bottom and then of course where it had been in the water yeah. it would be waterlogged <laughs> yeah. that's a nice touch yeah, it is. you know and then bubbles where the monster or the or he would be so yeah. wherever you put that if you put him over here then yeah, the monster yeah the was big on detail yeah, yeah I mean the detail on these so, so when Rob and I what I, what I was kind of trying to finish to say before I kind of forgot what I was saying ADD you know um, was that uh, the those little details in these dioramas, I mean, just sold me because once you yeah. saw it, you you wrote the story in your head. You were yep. there, you know, and so I just I just fell in love with it. And I, like I said, I've never been a diorama uh, person. I've never collected them, but for whatever reason, all five of these that I showed you today just they they spoke to me, and I was like, I gotta get them. I just I gotta get them. It's just something about that, and that yep. that figure sold it all for me, you know. So I just That's so true. my my fifth and final pick is the uh, 1998 McFarland Ooh. Sea Creature playset. Yeah. Honestly, I never. I mean, I've seen that one, but that's, uh, I've never seen it this close up and out. So that was cool. Cool to see. And that that these boards, you know, it's kind of floating yeah. in the water. That's that's a cool touch. Yeah. You know, it is. It's kind of cool. So that's cool. Well, yeah. share with us, and you know, if you guys have something that that maybe from a different series or whatever, if you have something, uh, send it to my stuff at genxvault.com. I'm curious to see. Rob and I both have said. We want to see other people's collections. We want to know what you guys are doing. I'm, I'm very curious to see what you guys are you know, into. Rob's final pick. Um, I know I've shown uh, slashers and uh, more recent uh, additions to the horror genre uh, as my picks today. But um, I've sent Chris a picture that he's going to flash up on the screen. Uh, when it comes to horror, my first and true love are the universal classic monsters. That's true. And I have um, a whole collection of them. Um, uh, back when Chris was doing plaid toys, uh, he was able to order them and we each got a set and then I actually added a couple more, oh, at least one more, uh, that or two more that he didn't uh, have, but I've got them displayed. Uh, the picture 
We'll be up there now. You may have already seen it. Speaking of which, as you're looking at that mummy right now, that is the heaviest sarcophagus. <laughs> that is actual weight. Yeah. That is literally stone. Yep. It's the heaviest thing ever. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't bring them because I love that collection so much that I could one I couldn't have picked and one I didn't want to undo it. Um, especially because Wolfman, he is so he does not balance at all. So I actually have um, there I actually have a piece of thread tied around his up under his arms and tacked to the top of the mm. shelf to keep him upright. Keep him up. Yeah. And then okay. you added that back that black drop back there behind it. That's just that's just shadow. You got to put trees in there, man. Yeah. You got to do some. Well, I've, I've added. Shadow. I have added some. Uh, you'll notice there's some. I've added some accent pieces mm -hmm. in there, and um, you'll notice that four that there's four accent pieces. And if you look real closely, I don't know how cl clear it is in the picture. You'll notice it's like a talon holding an orb. Okay. And actually what that is, is that is the feet off of an old um, antique stool that fell apart. Okay. And I took those things off because they were, like I said, they're shaped like talons. And uh, they're holding uh, like what looks like a, you know, uh, a crystal ball or something right. like that. So like, these are cool. I would like it to I'm be this. noted that while Rob said that his second Jason feature was his cheap, that wasn't. That was only his first cheat. Yeah. His second cheat are what we're talking about right now. Yeah. His exactly. ability to sneak a photo in there. But I but, could not have gone back to my collection and faced the Universal Monsters if I had not. I, I know, uh, I know. He, I, 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 so hey. while what I've shown you, I love, my true love is the Universal Monsters. That is true. Up there. Okay, my final pick is, um, I picked it, one, because I, when I was young, I read this, I, I watched this movie, and I read this book well before anyone my age should have. Um, and this is a little bit different than what you've seen so far. My final pick is Christine. Right. Everybody's favorite 1958 Plymouth Fury. Plymouth. What a perfect type yep. of car. Fury. Yeah, Fury. Mm. Uh, this is a really good design. I'm not a big car guy as far as like owning cars and all that. But if I ever get rich, that's what I'm going to. I'm going to have this car. Um, but for now, this will this will do me here. Um, honestly, I can't remember what company it was that did this. Let me look real quick. Plymouth. <laughs> uh, let's see. No, I don't see it here. Tommy. Tommy did. Tommy this. did it. Yeah. I think they did a lot of cars. Yeah. This is a, yeah because you can get you can get the Ecto One from Ghostbusters mm -hmm. and the Batmobile and everything. But this car is uh, very well done. We'll do close ups, but the the motors in there. Let me see that real quick. Now this is diecast. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's got a great the, motor. The, the motors in there are cool. Oh, man. The doors open up. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get a good close-up shot oh, of yeah. this, yeah. but you can see the, the seats are upholstered. You can see the gas pedal and the um, the dashboard and the radio and the, um, the steering wheels, all cool. Now, this is 118 scale. Yes. Okay. This is heavy. Holy moly. Yeah. The weight of this is, oh, man. Yeah. It's got the white wall tires. The trunk opens up. To reveal the spare tire, okay, is back there. Now let me ask you this: Obviously, the windows are tinted. Do, does does this do like the old school models do? Does the wheel turn the? Uh, the yeah, steel so. wheel turn the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a sucker for that. And. You got dual exhaust in the bottom. Yep. That. Oh. And the You got to show that camera. Oh, that is awesome. Because uh, nothing's better than when uh, the, you hear that John Carpenter. Yeah. Choo! And that's right. Come on. That's right. And uh, this is another John Carpenter movie. And he, I didn't realize yeah. that. Okay, so yeah. he did a Stephen King. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. You know that right? That that music is weird. That's yeah. so cool. Though. And uh, Stephen King, a lot of times with his movie adaptations, is kind of like eh. But he was pleased with John Carpenter's okay his take uh, on that adaptation of. And in fact, I'm actually rereading Christine. How now. did you turn the lights on? What, what did it? Oh, there's just a, a switch down on there. the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you maybe pushed the gas can or something yeah. like that. I wish I wish the tail lights came on too, but they don't. Yeah. But now, it's still it's still a cool effect. But this now, is I'd, I'd wanted this for a long time because Christine she is one of my favorite. I'm like Arnie. <laughs> she uh, Christine is one of my favorite um, horror icons from my youth. Oh man, that's right cool. Now. Okay, so now I got I want you to school me on something, Christine, since mm -hmm. you really like it. I was reading about it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because I was reading about it last Halloween. And if I'm not mistaken, the way they did the dents and things like that, they melted a plastic version and then shot it in reverse, reverse. right? Yeah, Is that a, correct? A lot of that they did that. They used a lot of pneumatics. Pneumatics. Inside too. it to push yeah. the 
to push the panels out. Right. Or 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 maybe they would do it in reverse and actually pull them in. Okay. And uh, they probably did that. Okay. So probably because you wanted to start with a pristine. Right. Right. Uh, right. Panel. Right. And so they would probably pull them in and then just run it in reverse. Right. To make. And then it. once you add the yeah. sound effect of the metal crumpling and stuff yeah. like that, you know, you yeah. you you do that. But Christine was just cool because I mean, she you did not want to mess with her. No. And like I said the way she went after those three guys that uh, busted her busted her all up was. Oh just yeah. Awesome. And when he when he does that. Show me what you can do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That was a, that was a cool uh, little scene. Yeah. Is that and how you open the door? You you grab that. Yeah. Okay. That's and the great. radio only played old. Um, only had AM, and only played old rock and roll songs. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. The yeah. This is classic, about. man. And yeah. they even did the Plymouth on the back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this this is what the car looked like in the movie. Oh yeah, it's. I beautiful. mean, down to it is nearly beautiful. the last detail. And anytime I, I collect a. Um, a I want, you to leave, I want you to leave her out this. Okay. Even for my pick, I'll let you leave her out. I'll let, I'm going to mm-hmm. give you a third or fourth cheat here as you've worked it okay. in. So, uh, and it, and it, because it, it ties into my next one a little uh, bit. Technically, uh, I only did two cheats. This will, well, I'll let this be a third cheat. No, this is my fifth figure. But I'll let it be in with mine as an uh, extra extra elongated. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, so that's cool. No, I like it. Uh, and I, actually, when I was reading about the Plymouth Fury, the, one of the big problems with it was with those uh, mirrors way mm-hmm. to crap up there. <laughs> yeah. You know, can you imagine the blind side? Yeah. yeah, trying to see what you did. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, Seth, um, Seth uh, Markowitz, uh, rebuilds old cars. And he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a Chevy guy. He really is. He's a Chevy guy. And uh, we talked about this one time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they were built like tanks back then. But you died in them if you were in a wreck. Yeah. You know, because there were no crush zones. Nope. There were no airbags. And, and the, one of the biggest misconceptions about old cars is they're really heavy. They're really mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Because you could actually work on an engine like this. Because you could actually, you know, there were room to get in there. Oh, yeah. I've seen and my dad in the 80s. He had an, uh, just a full-size truck that we mm-hmm. were camping in. And we were... We went up and he had we had engine trouble, mm-hmm. and of course my dad could have fixed it, but he didn't have his stuff with him. So we pulled into a local garage somewhere wherever we were at, and this little old fella he gets completely in, in the, the in the hood, and I'm sitting there going, wow. I mean, like he was literally in there. I could have closed it, and right. he would have been in there, right? Because you, know? you could see in the old 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 cars. Obviously, you're looking down the engine. Yeah, you had you had space. You could see the ground below yeah. you, so you could you could do that. Well, and so you know it's kind of funny though that that this. Uh, there's something about chrome, man. Yeah. There's something about chrome. And this one, and I love tail fins. Mm-hmm. I, you know, chrome and tail fins and those yeah. scoops. Well, Melinda mentions a lot that today's cars just don't have the um, the the look and detail of the old cars. Right. They, they didn't. Touch. You, I would, I will take a riding in a modern car any day of the week. But, oh, yeah. They're rough rides. But, but, but looking at a, a vintage car like that, there's mm-hmm. something to be said about that. That yeah. is absolutely true. All right, so that is a good fifth pick. Okay, yeah, that's a winning it well. And it's it's a nice uh, nice little little button cap to that. I like yeah. that. That's cool. Yeah. All right, you can leave her out. You oh, can leave her out. out. All right, so it is time for it's time for the box of mystery. So this week for the box of mystery, uh, I actually did something a little simple, um, and I knew Rob would be cheating, so I didn't actually. <laughs> I didn't cheat though, but what I did was I had to go back a little bit of my roots here and still keep it a little bit with the uh, with the uh, show theme. I did a GI Joe oh. in a hazard Viper suit. Is that what that is? Yeah. That's so that's that a is. Cobra. That's a Cobra. Yeah, okay. it's definitely a bad guy. Okay. You can tell because it says Viper. Um, it's oh, on the thing. The, yeah, the hazard viper, the and and he's probably got a cover logo. Yep, he's got a cover logo right there in his yeah. pouches. Um, so this guy again, all, all the beats for me. Um, <laughs> Has a detailed figure. Oh, it's crazy detailed. <laughs> um, it, his helmet does come off to reveal, you know, uh, yeah. another cover mask. It fits really well on him. Um, he's got the the uh, like plutonium or whatever he's got there. Yeah. Um, He's got the breathing apparatus on his front. His pouches have the Cobra emblem. Uh, his his uh, magazine clip there, he does have the gun. I haven't taken off the little rubber band holding that in. Yeah. He's got his uh, other other pouch or spray. Actually, I think that's the spray gun. I think this goes on... I think it actually... Does it spray? Yeah, I think this sprays water. Uh, I think this sprays okay. water. Um, but huh. what's cool about it is... Um, I love... Nowadays, I, I mentioned earlier... I used to like when the boots 
tucked into the figure when the mm-hmm. when the pants tucked into the figure's boot. Now I'm a huge fan of this <laughs> no, because it just adds so much realism yeah. and detail, and it's another way to hide a joint. Yep. So if they put those foot joints in there, you can. They've got the leg joints hidden in the yeah. wrinkle. They did a great job with that. They've got the torso joint hidden under the jacket, under the soft jacket. Yep. You know because they've added those uh, that soft material. They've done such a good job to separate this into a uh, just a, 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 a figure that I really wanted uh, to separate into joints and whatnot. I really wanted to at some point to showcase this one. And, you know, with the, with obviously there's been people walking around like this these days because <laughs> they've been, you know, doing a yeah. lot of cleaning and, and stuff. And, uh, and he's, he's got, got that pumpkin color. Yeah. So a little bit of Halloween there. And if you saw that coming at you in the dark, that would scare you. Especially with a gun in his left hand, yeah. you know, you're, you, you've, well, even, even without the gun, there's, there's, has there ever been any more practical device more terrifying than a gas mask? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Because yeah. there's just something. I think it's because it has it has basic human features, but they've been modified. Mutated. Yeah, those round and, uh, eyes, they're yeah. hollow looking. And that yeah, the, yeah. the tusk coming out. It kind of yeah because it's it's almost like the mask they made during the black plague. The black plague. Yeah. Those kind of two hole masks with the beak. Yeah. And they they were practical for you know dealing with the yeah. the, the bubonic plague. But it's plague. also very monstrous looking. That's right. Yeah. But that's right. Um, now the reason why I wanted you to re- leave Christine out yes. is because since, since it's at one eighteen scale, not only if you saw this guy coming from you, if you drove up in that, <laughs> you are God. hauling ass. All right, mm-hmm. there is no hanging out yep. to see what this guy's telling you the problem is. There's yep. not, you know, I mean, because God knows what he's going to pull out of that trunk, you know. Yeah. Um, I gotta get a. I wanna. I, I tell you, this is. A, I'm gonna let you open that door. I feel like I'm gonna break that handle. There. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I know that. I don't wanna break that handle, man. You want me to break it? Yeah, I'm exactly. Like that. I want you to break it, not me. Yeah, exactly. But like he's like he's like yeah. I gotta mm. gotta get out my my uh my little hazmat suit here. Yeah. yeah. For some reason he's a uh, southern. He's one of those white <laughs> trash guys. What yeah. Rob would mention yeah. earlier in the show. Um, he's a little bit. He, he kind of reminds me of that guy. I remember. Uh, one of the Lethal Weapon movies, it opens with a guy uh, shooting a flamethrower everywhere. I don't... He's kind of dressed does, up. I, which one was it? I don't know. Lethal Weapon 3 or 4, I, I think. I don't remember that. But, I do not remember that. But yeah, quick aside, uh, I know we did the movie show last week, but if you've never seen Christine, it's a, it's a good watch. It's got some creative kills in it. it do, well, um, yeah. I mean, when the, car is, yeah, when the car is the choice weapon, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But... So, for the box of mystery this week, I have chosen to do this Hazard Viper. wonderful Hazard Viper. And, of course, he's by his girlfriend, Christine. Yes, that is a good figure. All right. I think I, did, thought, you, I thought you'd like they that. They would make a very happy, uh, lethal couple. It, yes, they would. They, they, indeed, they would. Ask the Magic 8 Ball. All right. My question, and I wrote it down this week, and I want to make it specific for Ask the Magic 8 Ball. And this is one that you and I will both appreciate. Will McFarlane ever quit making figures that won't stand on their own? <laughs> I've got some Kiss figures that won't stand on their own. They're, like, they're literally yeah. at a forty-five degree angle. I've got uh, the the the. Like we were talking about the Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, she won't stand on again. She's at the forty-five, almost the yeah. same angle that. Uh, then you I have think, to lean them against something. Yeah, or, it's yeah. like uh, it's um, it's a uh, Paul Stan. Look at a Paul Stanley figure from McFarlane, and he's basically leaning forward, yeah. and you, you have to have the microphone that bends. And then, then we'll hold it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and of course, you know, Rob's first thing that he said about his uh, Jason figure, and excuse me, his Leatherface leather face. figure, was that he won't stand on his own. This is a figure with molded, yeah. you can't move his legs, but he will not stand on his own. And uh, at least as far as those two movie maniac figures go, they do not have a uh, whole peg holes in their feet. Peg holes. So you got to lean them on something. Yeah. So yeah. you can't, you can't buy a, you can't buy a stand. That's one thing I like about NECA. NECA has um, yep pickles. They sure do. So you can you can buy the pickles, and you know. So the so the thing that that plagues us collectors is that okay, it's like it's great. You made a wonderful action figure with no posable parts, and he won't stand up. <laughs> so the action is it's laying down in your room all the time. Yeah. Is that what's happening? And nothing looks worse than a falling over figure. It's horrible, yeah. horrible. So Magic Eight Ball. Will McFarlane ever make figures? That will just stand on their own, or they continue to make these non-posable, non-standing pieces of plastic. Will they make figures that will stand on their own? That'll look good. That'll look good. I think I think what it's gonna come down to 
is enough time's gonna have to go by enough research in joint technology enough research in uh in plastic and molding and finding all that i think that's what's gonna happen yeah so i'll look good so there you go okay my question that he just um, thought of now just thought of now christine versus kit mm. i'm going with christine do you agree with me Concentrate and ask again. Concentrate. Okay. Concentrate. <sighs> Christine versus Kit. I pick Christine. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to you're supposed to concentrate with it. So I am. I'm concentrating. You're saying properly. let's let's concentrate together. Because I like that question. I like that question. Okay. if would Christine win in a fight against, against Kit, Kit? If they yes. were both left to their 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 druthers, yep. would Christine win in a fight against Kit? Yes. We concentrated. Concentrate. Without a doubt. Without, a, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. Because Christine cheats. Christine got a little supernatural to her. Yep. I don't think. Uh, mm. I don't think Kit's um, programming can handle no. that. No, that's actually a good one. Christine versus Kit. Yeah. Would Christine? Yeah, I agree with that one hundred percent because she's got motive. Yeah. Kit's really just programming. That would make a good piece of artwork. Christine versus Kit. Christine versus Kit coming together. Uh, yeah. If there's any artists out there who want to draw that. Actually, that actually, cool. I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out. I'm going to start the shout out because yeah. check this out. Yeah. Robbie Bragdon, shout out to you this week because uh, Robbie Bragdon is an artist up around the Atlanta area. And I believe he's in Atlanta now, is he? No, he's in, unless he moved, he went and moved to North Carolina. North Carolina. Like I said, Robbie Bragdon, who's an artist in the North Carolina area. Um, our friends, Rob and I, we've known him for a long time. Um, and the cool thing is, is uh, I saw Robbie's Facebook post of artwork he's working on this week. Yeah. Guess what it was? What was it? Headless Horseman. Was it really? And I said, <laughs> I said, oh, you got a little yeah. inspiration from Gen X. I Vault. think I think he's even done some comic book work. Oh, a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I said, oh, you got a little inspiration from Gen X. While he goes, actually, I did. <laughs> so yeah, you baby. Did, Robbie. That's right. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. So uh, congratulations, Robbie, for that. So Robbie. Yeah. I think a killer Halloween thing will be an all mangled up, busted up kit with his all one eye light hanging yeah. down and, and Christine coming at it. That'd be kind of a cool yeah. thing. Yes, a, yeah, some, yeah, Christine basically, yeah, piece of art showing that Christine has just owned kit. Okay, I'm going to go further than this. Robbie, you make the artwork, I'll print the shirt, I'll send you the shirt. Yes. That's a, that's, a, that's a done deal. That's a done deal. That's a done deal. I like it. Let's see. Okay, now... Oh, I, I have a shout out. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give me the shout out. Let's go. Um, goes Chris, maybe remember a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Abby. Okay. Um, she, uh, this Friday and um, Sunday, she was the Mock Turtle in Alice in Wonderland play mm, put mock, on by... Mock Turtle. Mock Turtle. Okay. Uh, played at Statesboro High School, her mm -hmm. first play. All right. Uh, she was very excited. She did a great job. Uh, the whole cast did. It was very enjoyable. Good deal. Uh, so, uh, Abby, here's to you. I'm very proud of you. You did good. You did well. Uh, you great. done good. You done good. You done good, kid. That's good. Were they, uh, was everybody socially distanced in the theater? Did it Mostly, go? yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. They did a good job of that. There was a bunch of people, there was a bunch of people without masks, but enough with masks that maybe it was all okay. We hope so. Yeah. Okay. Wear your mask, people. Wear your mask. Okay, Wear come. your mask. Wear your mask. Yeah, that'd be cool. You go with a hockey mask, have a nice yep. filter behind it. Exactly. That's all you need. Yep. Then people leave you alone. All right, so I want to have another shout out to Chris Brenneman. Uh, he has a comic book shop up in Tucker, Georgia, which is a part of the Atlanta metro area, and it's called Infinite Realities. Uh, Chris Brenner and I went to college together. Uh, he was a few years younger than me. Uh, good friends with Jake Hallman, another friend of mine. You know Jake, of course. Yep. And uh, don't mention how you know him. I don't okay. want to. I, I know. I'm, I know. But, uh, that from we'll memory. keep that one under the table, under yeah. this table. But uh, no, uh, but Chris is, uh, he's got a comic shop. So if you're in the Atlanta area, the metro Atlanta area, and you want a really cool comic shop, and they, they of course sell toys and, and games mm -hmm. and everything else, go talk to Chris Brenneman at Infinite yeah. Realities. Uh, like Rob mentioned last week, comic shops and, and retail in general need your help. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just a tough time for that. you know. And if you, if you can... Spare any time with that. If you can go out yeah. and see it, Chris didn't ask me to say this or anything. I just, yeah. I just thought I'd throw him a bone because I know what it feels like to have a retail shop. Because so. comics have been a staple of American culture uh, for probably going on a hundred years now, close to it. More. And uh, when I think about a world where maybe comics go away or there's no more, no longer any comic book shops. Uh, you know, that's that's not a good thing. That's not a good no. thing. No, it would sound like this. 
in a world where comics don't <laughs> exist. That's what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Then it would switch to something like THX1138 where everybody was just... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We don't want that. We want that. No. You know, that's where the imagine. I mean, heck, I mean, honest to God, Disney and Marvel and the entire Hollywood machine right now mm-hmm. owe the most <laughs> recent massive successes to the minds of comic book artists. Yep. And, and to writers. comic book creators. Yep. I mean, they do. They owe all of that. You and know, sadly, those comic book creators... A lot of times don't get their due. That's right because they, of contracts and everything else that they signed years that's ago. That's right. But um, so to give any kind of support to them that you can yeah. go 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 buy a local comic. You know, go yeah. buy one. Get get. I'm I'm personally never been to comics themselves, but I love when they have anything extra at a comic shop. I'll pick that up. Like if it's yeah. something that I want, like a well, decoration. And, and if you're looking for cool collectibles, a local comic shop. They'll have the stuff that the mass marketplaces want. That's right. That's right. You know? they, they'll have some diamond select stuff that you won't see anywhere else. Yeah. And it'll be really, really cool. So go check out that. So Chris Brenneman at Infinite Realities, I want to give you a shout out. I hope you're doing okay through all this. I know Thank you've you. been very responsible through the pandemic, and I'm, I'm proud of that, man. Good yeah. job. Uh, let's see. And another one I, uh, I said earlier, I mentioned Michael Henley in the in the earlier part of the podcast. Michael, keep being awesome, buddy. I know I know that move that you had just went through is uh, tricky, but keep your head up. You're going to be doing good. Yep. And Michael is uh, he's a former student of mine at Southeast mm-hmm. Bullock. And the cool thing is, is that he uh, was really big into when he, he's the, the first time I heard the word Gungam was out of his mouth. And I've never <laughs> been into Gungam. It's not something I'm yeah, into. Me neither. But um, because but, we were too old for that. You know, we'd yeah. already we'd already moved on. We, we went back to the stuff that we grew up with in the 80s and 90s and, you know, of course, into the into the late yeah. 70s. So, you know, when we, uh, but, but he's the next generation of these painting yeah. toys. He's getting into it. He's That's doing cool. a really good job. So I'm going to make him some stuff and send him, uh, I'm going to make him 3d printing some stuff yeah. and send him. So we'll have that on the show That's later cool. on. That'd be cool. And, um, uh, big John, we haven't heard from you in a couple episodes. Big John. I don't know if you, if you quit watching or whatever, but if you, if you're still out there, uh, send us a comment. Rob likes, Rob likes writing to you. So, and yeah. me too. Me too. Yeah. So. Glad to hear from you, Big John. Let us know what you guys' thoughts are. Let us know what you think about Christine and Kit. And uh, for the Gen X Vault, I'm Chris Mitchell. Rob Kennedy. We'll see you guys soon.